Hi there, so it's me again, Charlie. Um, I'm gonna be in front of the camera doing the cooking and Laura is behind the camera and she's gonna be assisting me. Um, and today we are making a Chinese style kale. And the ingredients are kale, it's a very simple one. It's kale, soy sauce, oyster sauce, and garlic, and a bit of oil. Okay, now, so we're gonna start by doing a little bit of prep with the kale, and the kale that you have got in your recipe boxes was grown at the center um, in the community garden, um, just over in the rear in our woodland. Um, so yeah, it was lovingly, uh, lovingly grown by the uh, gardening group and uh, pupils from the Wyvern School. So your kale is gonna come uh, on a, on the stalky Stalk. bit like this, <laughs> and the way to get it off, which is very important, is to clamp and pull the leaves off like so. So and you're doing this to remove the kind of woody stalk, which can be quite tough and chewy. And if you're not cooking kale for a long time, then you want to kind of remove as much of that stalk as possible. That's that fine. Okay? Yeah. Cool. So just, so grip and just pull it off. Yep, just pull can it you, off. Can you rip it? Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. You're going to be chopping it up anyway, so you can you can tear it up, you can rip it up. And actually, if you're using kale raw um, in things like salads and, and things like that, if you spend some time kind of tearing it up and, and kind of rubbing it and massaging it, it breaks down those fibres and actually makes it a bit easier to eat raw. Really? So, so give it a... Yeah, the, kind of, the, more you, the more you kind of manipulate it, I guess, the, the better it is, um, I... especially when you're doing quick cooking with kale. Could I like just chop it whilst it was like that? Yeah, of course, yeah. Kind of bunch it all up and just give it a, a quick chop. Now, one thing I do know is that you leave the one end of the knife down, that end, and you roll yep. to reduce the risk of losing a finger. And keep those fingers tucked in at all times. Yeah, because I can't afford to lose any fingers at the moment. Like that? Perfect. That's cool. Right, heat up the oil. So the next thing I'm going to do is heat the oil, yeah. You don't want to do this too early on because what you, what you don't want is really super hot oil when you're going to be adding garlic. Um, burnt garlic. Is, is quite a bitter taste. Shall I turn that down? Yeah, turn it down a little and then add your oil in. Right, and this is a teaspoon, oh, sorry, a tablespoon. Tablespoon, yeah. It's hot. It's because it's a hob. <laughs> right, so you over there, done with your oil. Move that to the side for a second. Garlic. Yep. Okay, so. And what am I doing? I'm crushing it. So you want to just gently press down with the knife. You can just kind of squash the garlic and make the skin easier to peel off. So then you can just burst it. Ooh. And then you can just cut the um, the kind of dry end where it's normally attached to the, to the garlic bulb. come all the way yeah. yeah, perfect. And then you, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of slice that as finely as possible. And again, keep the fingers like right out of the way um, and just slice it as, as finely as you feel comfortable, I think, with this one. Okay. You could use a garlic crusher as well if you, if you have one. Um, Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty close now. Mm. <laughs> that's it. And because we're cooking this, it will take some of that raw kind of garlic taste out of the out of it. So having big chunks of garlic is not necessarily a, a problem. And I just want to say we took took this cow that, that I just pulled apart from Laura's garden, but we have um, we, we have got a bag of cow that we're going to be adding to it. So um, just a supplement into the. Yep. So chuck your garlic into the oil. Like that, right? Yep. Yeah. Ooh. And we're just going to give that a few kind of quick seconds in the oil on its own, just to kind of flavour that oil and take the edge off the, the kind of garlic taste. Just give that a swirl around. That's it. And then we're going to add add the kale before it all start before the garlic starts to brown. It's just starting to brown. Okay. So add the kale in. Yep. Just the water. The kale will wilt down a small amount. So what we're going to do now is, while you've got that kind of kale there, is just add the water, the hundred mils of water, yep. 
that I've measured out. Just, just pour it straight in. Did I have a... Yeah, scrub on from up there. Well, yeah, that's fine. Cool. And do I need to... Yeah, around? just give it a bit of a, a toss around. Because this is such a quick recipe, you could do this in two batches if you haven't got a big wok. So if you, if you look at the amount of tail that you've got and think, oh, it's not going to fit, do it in a, in a couple of batches. Smells really nice. Let's say, it, it will start to kind of wilt down a little bit. Ah. If you've got any big woody lumps yeah. like that, yeah, just remove them. See, you won't have these because you did yours by hand. <laughs> I would just reduce the heat a little bit if it's if it's feeling a bit too ferocious under there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. And then we're just going to add our soy sauce and oyster sauce. And I can just leave that. Yep, it'll just keep cooking down. It's okay. going to release a little bit more water as it goes as well. It, now, in the in in your recipe boxes. Um, we have combined your soy sauce and oyster sauce, so you can just tip yours straight in. Okay, that's really thick. <laughs> you should, go. No, you're right. Okay. There you go. Ooh. This smells really nice. Okay. Your soy is going to come out a bit quicker than that. Okay. Oh. And then we're just going to give that another stir. And we're probably going to leave it to cook for about two to three minutes. And then you'll be ready to serve with rice. Or you can eat it straight off the hob. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Enjoy, everyone.